Imagine right this moment your quiet neighborhood is suddenly teeming with the undead. What would you do in the first 72 hours of a zombie apocalypse? Sounds like something straight out of a Hollywood movie, doesn't it? But let's entertain this hypothetical scenario for a moment. The world as we know it has changed drastically. The rules of society have crumbled, replaced with the primal law of survival. Your neighbors, friends, the mailman, they might all be part of the undead horde now, it's a grim picture. But in the face of such adversity, what truly matters is how you react. The first 72 hours, the initial three days, these are the most crucial. They set the tone for your survival journey. It's not about the long term yet, it's about getting through the immediate danger. This period is about swift decision making, about assessing your situation, about taking those first steps that can mean the difference between life and, well, becoming one of the undead. In survival situations, these initial hours are often the most chaotic. Information is scarce, panic is rampant, and the world is adjusting to its new reality. But it's during this time that you need to keep your cool, to think clearly and to act decisively. Being proactive rather than reactive in these moments can drastically increase your chances of survival. Remember, in a zombie apocalypse, the danger isn't just from the undead. There's also the scarcity of resources, the potential collapse of infrastructure, and the unpredictability of other survivors. The first 72 hours will be a whirlwind of challenges, but it's these challenges that you need to overcome to ensure your survival. Think about it, if you can make it through the first 72 hours, you've already achieved a significant milestone. You've navigated the initial chaos, you've taken the first steps towards survival, and you've given yourself a fighting chance in this new world. Survival in those initial hours is critical. Let's delve into a step-by-step -step survival guide. The first instinct might be panic, but remember, panic is the enemy of survival. In the face of a zombie apocalypse, it's crucial to stay calm. Why? Your survival depends on it. Keeping a clear mind allows you to strategize effectively. Quickly assess your situation. What's the danger? Where's safety? Who's with you? What are their needs? Survival is not about might or agility, but about smarts and decision-making. Once you've overcome the initial shock, it's time to gather vital resources. Water, food, and first aid supplies are your lifelines in this harsh new world. Water is your first priority. Our bodies are mostly water and without it we can only survive for about three days. You'll need a clean, reliable source. Rainwater, rivers, and lakes are all potential sources, but remember you'll need to purify it before drinking. Boiling is one of the simplest methods or you can use a portable water filter or purification tablets. Next up, food. Non-perishable items are your best bet. Canned goods, dried fruits, nuts and grains can sustain you for a significant period. And don't forget about hunting or foraging. Learn some basic skills in identifying edible plants, insects and small game. It might not be your first choice but in a survival situation, you can't afford to be picky. Your third crucial resource is a basic first aid kit. Injuries and illness are a real threat in a survival situation, and without proper care a small cut or a minor illness can quickly become life-threatening. Your first aid kit should include bandages, antiseptic wipes, tweezers, medical tape, and pain relievers. Don't forget about prescription medications if you or anyone in your group needs them. So where can you find these resources? Well, supermarkets and pharmacies are obvious places but they'll likely be picked clean soon after the apocalypse hits. Instead, consider places that might be overlooked. Small convenience stores, hunting and camping supply stores, or even abandoned buildings could all be gold mines of supplies. Remember, this isn't a shopping trip. You're not browsing for the best deal. You're looking for what you need to survive. Be efficient, be thorough, and be quick. Time is of the essence, and you don't want to be caught out in the open when the undead come calling. With your immediate needs taken care of, it's time to think about longer-term survival. A secure shelter is your fortress against the undead. In the midst of a zombie apocalypse, shelter is more than just a roof over your head. It's a sanctuary, a stronghold, a safe haven amidst the chaos. It's the difference between life and certain demise. So how does one go about finding the ideal shelter? Firstly, your shelter needs to be defensible. A good defense is the best defense after all. Look for structures with sturdy, reliable doors and windows that can be reinforced. High fences or walls can also serve as excellent barriers. Keep in mind though, that your shelter isn't just about keeping the undead out. It's about allowing you to defend it effectively. An ideal shelter allows you to monitor your surroundings and fend off any undead that might come too close. Secondly, your shelter should have multiple exits. In the event that your primary exit is compromised, you'll need a backup plan. 
windows, back doors, fire escapes. These could all potentially serve as life-saving escape routes. Remember, flexibility and adaptability are key to survival. Finally and perhaps most importantly, your shelter should be away from populated areas. While it might be tempting to choose a location in the heart of a city, remember that populated areas are likely to be teeming with the undead. Rural or suburban areas, on the other hand, offer a lower risk of encountering large hordes of zombies. Plus, these areas are often rich in natural resources such as wood for fortifications and fire, or water from nearby streams or lakes. In the end, the perfect shelter won't just appear out of thin air. It will require careful thought, diligent searching, and perhaps a bit of elbow grease. But the effort will be well worth it when you're safe and sound with a strong fortress between you and the undead. Now that you have a safe place to stay, it's time to think about your next moves. In a world turned upside down, information is power. In the wake of an apocalypse, the ability to communicate with others becomes a lifeline. It's the difference between isolation and connection, between ignorance and awareness. In this new reality, your survival may depend on the messages you send and receive. Let's start with radios. A simple handheld radio can be an invaluable tool. With it, you can tune into emergency broadcasts, news updates, and other vital information. Furthermore, a two-way radio provides the option to communicate with others who are also equipped with radios. Remember though, that using a two-way radio means anyone listening on the same frequency can hear your conversation. It's a tool to be used wisely and sparingly. Next up, we have satellite phones. These devices are capable of making calls from virtually anywhere in the world, as long as there's a clear line of sight to the sky. They're not dependent on cell towers which may be knocked out or overloaded in a crisis. With a satellite phone you could potentially reach out to friends, family or emergency services regardless of distance or local infrastructure. Let's not forget other communication devices. Signal flares can be seen from miles away, making them a great tool for attracting attention in an emergency. Morse code, an oldie but a goodie, can be transmitted through simple light or sound signals. Even a piece of paper and a pen can serve as a means of communication. Leaving a note can alert others to your presence, your plans, or potential dangers in the area. In a survival situation, knowledge is your best weapon. That's why establishing communication channels is so crucial. It allows you to gather information, reach out for help, and let others know you're still here. It gives you the power to navigate this new world, not just as a lone survivor, but as part of a larger community. With communication lines open, you're no longer alone in this fight. Survival is not just about the present, it's about planning for what comes next. Surviving the initial 72 hours of a zombie apocalypse is a monumental task, but it's just the start. You must think beyond the immediate crisis, to the days, weeks, and potentially even months ahead. It's essential to secure long-term resources and familiarize yourself with the surrounding area. Consider the basics, food, water, and shelter. Initially, you might have enough supplies to get by, but what happens when they run out? You need to identify sustainable sources of food and potable water. This could be a nearby river, a forest rich in edible plants and wildlife, or even an abandoned grocery store. Your shelter, too, might need to change. The place you've holed up in for the first few days might not be suitable for long-term living. Look for a place that's defensible, comfortable, and close to your resources. Exploration is key. The more you know about your environment, the better your chances of survival. Knowledge is power, especially when you're dealing with the undead. Lastly, don't discount the power of human connection. Other survivors can be invaluable allies. They can bring new skills to the table, help you defend your base or simply provide the emotional support necessary to keep going. With a plan in place, you're well on your way to surviving the first 72 hours of a zombie apocalypse. The first 72 hours of a zombie apocalypse could spell life or death, but with the right steps, you can make it through. Let's recap. Firstly, we discussed the importance of managing the initial shock. Staying calm and composed under pressure is an invaluable skill during a crisis. It's the very foundation that will allow you to think clearly and make smart decisions. Next, we delved into the critical task of gathering resources. Remember, water is your first priority, followed by food. Don't forget about medical supplies and tools that can be used for protection or utility. The key is to remain resourceful and innovative. You never know what everyday items can prove to be lifesavers. Finding shelter was our third point of focus. Your shelter should be secure, defensible, and ideally a little off the beaten path. 
It's not just about finding a place to hide, but somewhere you can fortify and defend. It's your haven in a world gone haywire. We also touched on the importance of establishing communication. In a zombie apocalypse, information is power. Whether it's a battery-operated radio or a makeshift signal fire, any means of reaching out to the world and acquiring information can make a significant difference to your survival. Lastly, we talked about planning for the future. It's about thinking beyond the initial 72 hours. What will you do when supplies run low? How will you handle potential threats? Planning ahead will help you stay one step ahead of the game. In conclusion, surviving the first 72 hours of a zombie apocalypse is a daunting challenge, but it's not impossible. These steps are your guide to making it through the initial phase, setting you up for long-term survival in a changed world. Remember, in a world where the dead walk, the most important thing is to keep living, stay safe, stay smart and survive. And before we end this video, we want to remind you that knowledge is your ultimate survival tool. The more prepared you are, the better your chances of survival. So let's continue this journey together. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more survival guides, tips and strategies. By subscribing, you'll be notified as soon as we have a new video up. You never know when this information may come in handy. We hope you never have to use these survival strategies, but it's always better to be prepared. Remember, in a world where the dead walk, the most important thing is to keep living. Stay safe, stay smart, and survive. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.